This program is made possible through the generous support of the International Candlepin Bowling Association. Learn more at candlepinbowling.com. By Woburn Bowlerdrome, 32 Montvale Avenue. And on the web at woburnbowl.com. By your community's public access channel. And by your Franklin friends and neighbors, good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching. championship and now we'll get two more bowlers to compete against him. Welcome to our 15 to 18 semifinals on Candlepin New Generation. He is Brian Rowe. I am Rob Taylor. These two earned their way here. These two had a bye, which still means they earned it, so it's not like they haven't done anything. <laughs> yeah, way to just lives. completely just say they didn't do nothing. They're a strong team. Why don't you have them brag to us right now? Strong team. Number two seed, number one seed. One. Number one seed. Best team in the tournament, allegedly. You guys got to live up to it, though. Is there any pressure about being the one seed? A little bit, but you just kind of have to bowl your game and just relax. Another bogey representative going up against a bogey representative. You know uh, inside and out this guy over here? Yeah, we, we bowl on league together, so it's... And then you obviously know the uh, hopefully future competitors. Yes. What's more scary, you're facing those two in the future probably, or facing this guy right now? Um, Take I'm all not. Your feelings out of the Don't worry about yourself anymore. This is just TV. Personally, Aaron and Jamie are my biggest competitors in this, but especially after what Aaron just did that yes. last game, right? Yes. But a man who is very familiar with throwing doubles, possibly triples, and just strikes all around, Mr. Michael McGinty. What's going on, my friend? Um, nothing much. Just trying to survive through the day, I suppose. Seems uh, like you're always the one seed or a favorite or paired up with Jeff Surratt in some tournament. How do you consistently do it? Um, just keep the ball in the head pin, one three pocket, hope it goes. You know, a lot of our bowlers like to hit the head pin. Yeah, that's the this like, uh, one takeaway from the... How do you feel about today and uh, your team? Uh, I think we have a strong team. I know Kayla's a really good bowler. Uh, I just have to live up to my 110 average. She's going to carry me through like a 180. I've already talked to her about it. So I think, I think we're going to do all right. There you have it. Once again, we're going to see the lady carrying it. Yeah, that's what we've seen most of the weeks. They're the one seeds. I'm here with the underdogs. Brianna Smith, last time you were a bundle of nerves. How are you feeling now? Same. Glad to hear her. That motivated you to a 105 game last time. Do you think it will again? Yeah. Any changes you plan on making? Saw you over there. Were you making any tweaks or no? No. What is your take of this team? You've seen Mike Bull plenty of times. You guys, you've seen everybody. What do they bring to the table? They make me more nervous, actually. You're more nervous now. Yeah. Well, to me, you were really nervous last time you bowled well. If you're more nervous, even better. Well, I have no idea. Well, that's what I want to see. Kyle, you heard her talking about the bogey lanes rivalry. What is your take on her? Can you take her? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can take her. Wow, not mincing words. Yes, he can. That's what we like to hear. Uh, what's the plan for this match? Are you nervous? No, not at all. Because you're facing her, like, why yeah. worry? That's yeah. the theory. I love this. Let's Finally, go. Finally, some trash talk. All right, Mike McGinty, have you seen him bowl before? No, I haven't. Nice, good. He's Garbage. good. He's Garbage. good. Don't worry about it. How are you going to take him? I'm just going to do the same thing I did in the last match and just bowl as well as I can. Ignorance is bliss, man. I love Sportsmanship this. Sportsmanship is finally out the window. All right. Well, let's get this match underway. Let the punches be thrown. It's game time. Game time. Bogey against bogey. Showdown. But not right now. First, it's Kayla Dombrowski throwing the first ball. Go get him, Kayla. No, not right not, now. Not, it's, it kind of is. It's bogey against bogey, but... But it's staggered because. But it's not. It's not because Brianna Smith is from Alley Cat. Let's go. And that is the that's the first uh, first under the lights ball of Kayla Dombrowski's career. It's a nine pin drop. Kayla, hometown Worcester, school Wachusett, bowls out of bogey. I'm confused. <laughs> a lot of travel time. You'll go far to work with the best coaches around. Kayla with a nice that. ten. Brianna with a nine. We got. I'm excited for this match. This this should be fun. I like the uh, I like this newcomer versus McGinty thing. It's like you can't be afraid of Tiger Woods if you've never heard of him before. Tiger. Is that too? Is that hyperbole? Is that too uh -oh. big of a comparison? Dombrowski. Uh -oh. Brianna with the hammer. 37. Everyone was wow. busy watching Kayla's pin wiggle and I'm Brianna was busy. I'm still waiting for that one to go down. 
Vincent Dombrowski opening with two nine pin drops, and she's on it. No this is going to be fun, Rob. This is going to be fun. No wood required. I'm going to have an ulcer after it, but you know, whatever. So Dombrowski, two consecutive nine pin drops, easily could have been two bombs. Is now the time? Is it time? Is now time? It's time. For what? For a hammer. Oh. <laughs> no, it's not time. It's off the head pin. Half whisker for Kayla. Brianna going for the double. She leaves a solid five. Ladies. And now Dombrowski on a tough two fill. She's going to try to pick up this half whisker. She plays it safe. Brianna, meanwhile, on it. Wow. Woo. And we're off. Brianna Smith not looking nervous at all, opening 39 in a ball after three. Kayla with a, a very a, nice out. That's a good out. That's a good out for there. And so an early 10-pin lead in favor of Brianna Smith. The last thing you want in that case is a three, four box. We got a pin in the gutter, Rob. We do. We got a pin in the gutter. And Michael McGinty. So Kayla, clear the gutter. Mike hold halt. Halt. And Kayla... Wow! What a performance! What a shot! I've never seen it. That was the best gutter ball I've ever seen. Ever. Normally it's a casual throw into the gutter, it slowly goes down. She had velocity, she had the cap. That was beautiful. It was as if Kayla didn't want to throw it in the gutter. No, no, who does? Brianna, meanwhile, putting five on the fill. She's up to 44 through three. Strong start from Smith. She does. And since it's slower, it has more time to hook. Dombrowski looking for the out. Brianna with another great effort. That could have easily been three in a row. Which leaves There's me the asking the question. Right Where was this in pro kid, Brianna? I'm kidding. She was a great partner. Someone hasn't moved on. I'm, I'm still bitter about it. And I hope whoever faces Aaron Fontaine next week takes him down. Wow. I hope I, uh, we could have Brianna avenge my loss to Aaron Fontaine. That would be interesting. That's what I'm worried about. You know, I don't want to tell anyone if we stick you out there. <laughs> yeah, just tap me in, Kyle. I'm ready. My balls are in the car. Dombrowski. Currently down 15. Looking to put a mark on the end here. Right on the inside of that head pin. Doesn't want to hurt him. Brianna misses as well, so... A big swing potential here for both sides. And Kayla, unfortunately, in the gap. Won't hurt her too much, though. Only a one-pin difference there. So not quite the explosive finish as it was the start. Brianna Smith with a strong 59 at the break. Kayla, 43. So 16 pins the difference. Currently in favor of Meskis and Smith. Now we get the chance to see our one seed. Mike McGinty with a 360 qualifying score. Paced the field. A lot of body English, a lot of action. A lot of strikes, but not this time. Meskis, meanwhile, again, no fear. no fear. I think that's what you need to beat him. McGinty, ooh, tough break. Not where he wanted to be. Who does not know his opponent has no opponent, Rob? <laughs> Meskis, he's got it. Told you. Nice bear for Kyle. McGinty nearly went through those two pins. Which I know, yeah. Cool. And so Kyle Meskis. He's just reinforcing, he's just reinforcing our, uh, our ideas there. Kyle Meskis, the underdog story here. 349 qualifying score, so maybe not that big of an underdog. Someone give me, came give out of some, nowhere. Give me some stats on Kyle. I'm kidding, I have them. 140 high single, 91 average, didn't put anything else. McGinty, meanwhile, very decorated stat sheet. Oh, yeah. He's got plenty on here. He's got a high single. Take a guess, Rob. One. He threw 167 You're already on the wrong. Show. I'm going to tell you that. Nice spare by McGinty. 206. 206. 206. That's what it says. Might be like the Tim Douglas 117 average. I'm not sure of that. High triple of a 449 with a high five of a 645. Average of a 113. So a 20... Either a 16 or 22 pin differential, depending on whether Kyle put a 1 or a 7 for his average. <laughs> but right now it's a 21 pin difference in favor. Kayla hit the reset. It's a McGinty apparently, now looking to chip away. Apparently one of McGinty's hidden talents is he's really good at breathing. 
Who isn't, Brian? <laughs> <gasps> dead, dead people. <laughs> that was the answer. <laughs> Almost forgot to breathe there. <laughs> McKinty, tough to fill. Maskis with a hammer. So why? Kyle Maskis. Looking like a decorated veteran up there. McGinty Kyle. Who? Dropping bombs. McGinty's half could be very different right now. He really was just a little bit off on that first box where he had the spare opportunity. Would have had a large fill on it. Picked it up and then a two fill. So things could be very different right now. But instead, Kyle Meskis with a 21 pin lead and two balls. I think this, I mean, it's early. It's really early. But this could be the upset of the ages. McGinty. So dangerous. You think that if that ball hits the head pin, it's a guaranteed eight plus. Oh, wow. Maskis, meanwhile, off. Yeah, I think Mike's got to take a deep breath after that one. This is going to be a key ball for Kyle. Oh, Real chance oh. for a big swing here. You got seven, you're feeling good. You get six, you're feeling decent. You right. yeah, can take a six. As long as you get the big out here. McGinty with the seven. McGinty's all about the foot kick. I mean, I, I don't know what else you would kick with. Is how I was your foot kick. So. Mm, fair point. But kick in general. True. Alex not to punch, though. Prefers to kick. Nice nine by Mestis. Good nine. So he has stretched that lead up to 29, and I think he's going to want every one of these when you have a bowler as dangerous as McGinty and Kayla Dombrowski. No lead is safe. But Kyle off to a great start. Favorite food? Pepperoni pizza? A I got bagel of, bites over here, which is pretty close. Men of simple tastes. <laughs> There are no maple crusted salmon, Colleen Dumas. And this would be a key mark from McGinty. This could give him a little momentum going into that second half. Not an easy shot, by On any it. Wow. Wanted to be a little bit lighter. You can see the disappointment. And now a chance for Meskis to again keep swinging that game in his direction. Veers left. Uh, we got a nickname from McGinty here Weapon of Pin Destruction. I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the sound of that. I don't know how old or new it is, but. There it is. I haven't heard it before. Heard it here first, people. Meskis with a 7, so 115-88 at the break. 27-pin lead in favor of our underdog number 5 seeds, Brianna Smith and Kyle Meskis. The math you do in your head impresses me. School teacher, Brian. Thank I know it's too. just addition, but I Sub can't do it. Subtraction, actually. <laughs> you got to add up the scores and then subtract the difference. So you know what? There's addition the in The computer there. does the adding for me. I just subtract Where? the numbers oh, out. I didn't see that. <laughs> yep. Week 11. <laughs> it's in the bottom right, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Brianna Smith looking for another spare. She's all over it. Another <laughs> single pin pickup by Brianna Smith. I got a glare kind of right here. Like, you uh, can't really uh -huh. see <laughs> And so I keep waiting. I'm not as impressed anymore, are you? <laughs> I keep waiting to see our newcomers hit that wall, go through a little markless stretch where Kayla and Mike McGinty make their comeback, but they are not letting up right now. Brianna Smith. You can't let up. 69 and a ball through six. Her hobby is drawing. Brianna Smith. And that one's getting a little away from her, but she gets a very nice... Six fill she gets out a very nice bunch of wiggles and nothing falling. That's where she gets a very nice. She'll take the six, and those are tied up I mean, yeah, well together. She just the head where it goes. Uh -oh. Gets away from her, Why trying not? to steal Why it. Not? Look at this. Almost catches it. Right Kayla, meanwhile, come on in. Also, almost steals it. Just a little off. As a bowler, is that one of the most disappointing misses when you only leave the head pin? I would say so. It always hurts me a little bit. Part of me dies inside when I miss a, a spare because I didn't hit the head pin. And you're always rattled for the third ball because you haven't been able to successfully hit that pin twice. What's yeah. going to make this ball any different? I mean, at that point, who cares? And it's only one pin, and that gets in your head, but every pin counts. Yada, nah. yada. No, you don't. No. Every pin doesn't count. No. I usually only throw two balls. <laughs> Brenna a little off there. Footwork's a little tricky. Kayla. Nice little break. Gets a break off the head pin, and that's the type of thing that can jumpstart you. You get that break off the head but pin, you put the mark up. If you can take advantage of it, you can definitely get going off that. She's there, and there she's it got it. Now, how many times do you see a bowler come back and fill that with 10? Nice 10 Great by Brianna. So that keeps the difference at 36. 
get a little break, you take advantage and take the mark, and now you just bury a strike. Is that how it goes? That's how it's supposed to. That's how you draw it up. And she's a drawer, right? Oh, no, that was Brianna. Nope, that was Brianna. What Sorry. are Kayla's hobbies? DJing. Uh, oh, she's a DJ. Wicka, wicka, wicka. Wow. Hammer for Brianna. Very pretty strike. Brianna Smith throwing is quietly throwing one of the best strings we have seen all taping, all 11 shows. Sitting at 105 in the ninth with two balls. I think people throw a lot of quiet strings with us because we don't talk about them enough. Is Brianna Smith one of the ones that deserves a little more? No, we just don't talk about it. We talk about random stuff. Too. That's true. Dombrowski with the mark. So she strings two together, which makes that strike by Smith all the more key. Favorite movie is The Fault in Our Stars. Never did. Kayla. Didn't, didn't I see the tearjerker. I didn't see it. I, I didn't want to see it. I don't uh, know. I don't want to crack. I go to a movie, I want to laugh. Yeah. Or I want to learn. I do not want to be sad. Or I want to learn. I never want to be sad. <laughs> Brianna, a little off the head pin. <laughs> Kayla with a chance to. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Wow. That hurts, right? When you start doing the math, thinking about your comeback, and you go You're through the whole thing. Looking to convert it. Nice try. And so Kayla with nothing to be ashamed of in her Candlepin New Generation debut. Brianna, on the other hand, a strong 117 performance from the Alley Cat contestant. Dombrowski finishes at 95, right around her average. And so 33 pins the lead in favor of Meskis and Smith. 33, attraction. You got it. 33, 173 minus 140. And so now, McGinty needs strikes. And if there's anybody... He, is he sitting on a strike? He is, I don't think so, no. And if there's anybody who can throw them, though, it is McGinty. But Meskis is no slouch himself. He leaves the five. McGinty punches again. So not the way you want to start your comeback. Gets away from Meskis, an opportunity to put the game away there. McGinty, meanwhile, looking to capitalize, punches through. Now Meskis going for the 10. Gets away from him. It says here McGinty's been all events champ uh, four years in a row. Wow. States, it says that. States. Yeah, all scratch events, states, champ, four years in a row. It is New Hampshire, though. Ah, of course. Competition a little weaker in New Hampshire. Not to take anything away from McGinty. He said it, not me. McGinty is also an ICBA champion, a scholarship winner. And that's against everybody. Uh, Kyle's feeling a little more comfortable. He's starting to talk to the pins. So, well, come starting on. to get into come himself. On. Come on. Kyle at a nice 65 after 6. He's on it? Oh, he's oh, not wow. on it. My mistake. McGinty now. Nice try. But Mike's running out of boxes here. Starting to look a little bit like uh, Payne Manning. I don't think he looks hurt. He <laughs> doesn't look hurt. Not all right, but you know. He's, Mike's throwing some good balls. Three objects on that one. <laughs> Just wasn't able to put them together, and so McGinty now down 35. Three boxes left. You got to start thinking double. Unless Kyle starts throwing zeros. That's true. Kyle That's does not, a not zero. do that. Nope. McGinty. Another head pin hit and another brutal leave for McGinty. Kyle kind of with a chance to ice it here. I think either way, we are in set for an excellent championship matchup. Do agree. Winner of this match taking on Jamie Pingree and Aaron Fontaine. Wow. McGinty. I don't know if I'd have gone there. I would have gone for the front wood. See if I could flip something off the wall with it. Go helicopter. Exactly. And gets away from Kyle. McGinty as well. And so our gentlemen enter a bit of a lull here. A markless second half for both sides, but that's good for Meskis, as that just writes boxes off of this one. 34 pins the lead. I think Mike has to mark in this box. Oh, yeah. No, we gets got away the lead from at right now? 34. 34? Actually, no, 37. No, it's 34, yes. So 
Mike's got to pick up the spare. I mean, it's definitely doable. Mike has to pick up the spare, toss a triple, and hope. Meskis, meanwhile, can shut the door. I think he pretty much did. So that yeah. one gets away from Mike. So Kyle Meskis and Brianna Smith are going to be advancing to a final showdown against the bogey combo of Jamie Pingree and Aaron Fontaine. You got five seed? Five versus two. In our 12 to 14 age group, everything went according to plan. We had one versus two in the championship, so this would be the first upset of a top seed today. And it looks like it's going to be the two newcomers, Brianna Smith and Kyle Meskis, Alley Cat Lanes and Bogey Lanes, taking down the one seeds. Meskis taking his time to finish this one. Victory lap, if you will. McGinty! Showing what he can do late. Meskis' favorite song, Hey Soul Sister. <laughs> I saw that. Wow, McGinty, it's just not his dad. That's the hard thing about this show. You only get one string. And sometimes that string doesn't go your way. A couple bad breaks and it can change everything. And this one, they go in favor of Meskis and Kayla Dombrowski. They finish with a 216 combined score. They are advancing to our championship. We will talk to both of them and see if they're ready to face the bogey connection right now. We have a young man and young woman who are advancing to our championship here next week. Great match by these two underdogs. Full oh, speed it was ahead. An awesome match. Um, not something I think a lot of people were expecting. No. But, you know, that's why we play the game. That's right. We'll talk to Brianna Smith. She led the way. The star, if you will, taking nothing away from Kyle, but a 117. Uh, how are you feeling? You going to the championship match? Just do a great game. Let's talk. I feel great. <laughs> First time on the show. Obviously, the nerves out the window. You're still a little nervous. You're still a 117. Uh, I'm a little, yes, I'm still a little nervous. What about in this championship match next week? You're going to be nervous for that, too? Yes. Come on. I think you got it under control by now. Eh? Um, we got them facing an all-bogey crew. All-bogey. Aaron Fontaine, Jamie Pingree next week. You know anything about the bowlers? No. Well, your, uh, your partner here is a bogey bowler, so he's going to give you all the insight, hopefully, about you know the weakness, where to attack them. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, for now, you know, let's get a little practice in. Excited for next week? Yep. All right. Well, you can see it in her eyes. She's not done. She wants to finish, and then she's going to have a little fun. I can tell. Yeah, neither of them are done. Kyle Mesk is first time, well, second time now on the show, and you're still cruising. How does it feel? It feels pretty good right now. I'm I'm just, like, really surprised that I've gotten this far. You've been doing great. You had a really good ball going. You had a really good first ball going. How are you doing it? I'm just uh, concentrating on my game and just rolling the ball. Um... A strong performance. What was it like with Brianna handing you such a big lead? Did that change your mindset at all? No, not at all. I just wanted to do as best as I could. So now next week, Aaron Fontaine, you'll be going up against him. Give us the scouting report on Aaron. He is really good. He is definitely a very good bowler. Do you face him a lot at your home house? Yeah, I do. How do those matches usually go? He does a very good job, and he, it's going to be a tough competition. Can you take him? Yeah. The question. Yes, yes, I can definitely take him. He says he can take him. I'm excited. The I hope question, we can see it. The question I have, did you color coordinate with, with her? Did you pick the red shirt intentionally to match? No, I didn't. You did not. Well, okay. we, we'd have a problem if he was wearing the same shirts as uh, Aaron. If it was Which all purple, I'd get sure confused. They don't next week. No confusion. Red versus purple. Three bogeys. And Brianna Smith representing Alley Cat. It three be three a bogeys and a Brianna. <laughs> That's right. I'm excited. Don't miss it. That is next week, our championship match, our last match of our 12-episode day. We thank you for joining us here from Woburn Bulldrome. And on behalf of our Franklin TV crew, he's Brian Rowe. I'm Rob Taylor. You've been watching Candlepin New Generation. This program is made possible through the generous support of the International Candlepin Bowling Association. Learn more at candlepinbowling.com, by Woburn Bowlerdrome, 32 Montvale Avenue, and on the web at woburnbowl.com, by your community's public access channel, and by your Franklin friends and neighbors, good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.